Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, does anybody remember where we were last week? Of course, in Abu Dhabi. We must grow. Grow or throw? Ah, okay. I heard throw. We must grow. We've been talking about the I must series. We've been, this is the, uh, this is the fifth week. Fifth week that we're doing this series and uh, we talked about I must pray last week. We talked about I must grow. Hallelujah. We must grow. The Bible says you and I belong to an ever-increasing kingdom. The kingdom of God is ever-growing, ever-increasing. And the Bible says we are part of that kingdom. So if the kingdom is ever-increasing, if the kingdom is ever-growing, then we need to grow along with it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And one of the scriptures that we took as a base was, was well, it was from 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse number two, he says, like newborn babes, like newborn infants, crave, long for your sincere milk of God's word. It's a landmark scripture. If you say that, if you're talking about, I must grow, then you should know where it is in the Bible. Because the word of God says, we must grow. Hallelujah. NLT version says that we must intake of the, we must partake of the sincere milk of the world and we must grow by it. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? It's no big deal carrying tags or stars and I'm 20 years in the Lord. It's no big deal. How many years you're walking with the Lord? 15 years. It's no big deal. It matters nothing. It's just a relative term. How many years you're walking with the Lord? 40 years. How many years you're walking with the Lord? Four years. It may amounts to nothing if there is no growth. It's useless. Hallelujah. Amen. We sometimes remember the day we gave our lives to Christ. And that's about it. And we celebrate probably year on year. But the actual tangible, measurable growth is a question. Hallelujah. Because we have not started off with the first word itself. Or even if you have started, we are still stuck up with milk word. We just want everything diluted. We want everything easy. We want everything that you can able to digest. We are like so habituated for that. Please process this with me for a minute. Process with me with this. If I have somebody, well, how old is Ian? Seven. Seven years old. Anybody 10 years old here? 10 years old? There. We have somebody who's 10 years old, double digit. I purposely picked out on a double digit. Imagine for a minute, if I see this boy and he's 10 years old and he still wants to be on his feeding bottle, he still wants to be on his poopsie bottle, if he still wants to be on that formula milk or the first meal that he started off, then there is some problem with him. There is no growth. He could be saying, I'm 10 years old. I'm double digit, 1-0. But that has not progressed. Why? He still is wanting to do what? I still want to dwell on that milk. Then there is an issue here. Hallelujah. Physically he may have grown, but mentally he has not grown. Now, that's where I left the word last week is Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 13. See what it says. While milk is for the babes, is for the toddlers, is for the, is for the infants, for the beginners. Sincere milk of God's word. Hallelujah. Look at what it says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Verse number, uh, chapter 5, 5, verse number 13. It says, meat is for those who are of age. It's a solid food. It's for those who need to partake of it. Is who are the ones who are mature, who are of age. By the use of it, they have their senses exercise to know what is good and what is evil. Is that what it says in the Bible? But I left that word before that. Verse number 12. He says, by this, Paul is speaking and saying, by this time, you, shall, you ha should have been teachers. But you have gone in reverse gear to such an extent that you are saying that give us the first milk that you gave us. The first principles that you taught us. See, it's on the scripture. He says, by now you ought to be teachers, but you need one to teach you again. The first principles. 
द सॉल्वेशन मैसेज ओनली गॉड लव यू मैसेज ओनली गॉड केयर्स यू मैसेज गिव मी ओनली दैट एट दैट वेरी 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 मिल्क लेवल एंड देन ही सेज वॉट यू हैव बिकम एज सच ऑफ नीड ऑफ मिल्क एंड नॉट ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग मीट हाल लू है लिसन The dads in the house and the moms in the house cannot eat on behalf of the children. Does everybody have a stomach? Come on, guys. Why is so serious? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is not serious. No, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. So you can smile. You can smile. Lighten up. Does everybody have a stomach? Just check it out. If you have a stomach, yeah, everybody has got a stomach. If everybody has got a stomach, that means you feed for your stomach. You eat for your stomach. The mom does not say, "I'll eat on your behalf." The dad does not say, "I'll eat on your." You just say, "You just have the food. I will eat on your behalf." No, everybody has got a stomach. Then, if you take that analogy to spiritual life, then everybody should be having a spiritual stomach also. Hallelujah! Are you with me, church? The leader of the church, or the head of the church, or the pastor of the church, or the messenger of church, or, or, or God, or the servant of God, you can say, "I will eat on your behalf." There's something wrong. But each one of us has a needs to have a spiritual stomach too. Are you with me, church? Thank God, it doesn't say that spiritual meat, spirit, strong meat, solid bread, solid food belongs to the servants of God. He doesn't say, "Thank God, it's not there." Otherwise, people say, "Pastor, that is your word. You should only handle it." You're an evangelist. You're a prophet. You're a teacher. You're an apostle. I think that word belongs to you, not for us. No, this is for every son of God. Any sons of God in this house? Amen. Then, if you're a son of God, that means you have a spiritual stomach also. Amen. If there is a spiritual stomach, then you need to feed. When is the time that you know that you are unwell in normally? You don't need to tell. You don't need to go to the doctor to ask or to check it out. When is the most common thing that you come to know that you are unwell? Specifically, when you are having fever. What happens? You don't feel hungry. You have lost your taste. Automatically, you come to know there is some internal issue happening. Come on, sir. Are you with me? Our babies don't come and tell. Two years old baby also will not come. Mama, can can you check me? I'm having fever. I think I'm having. No, no. The what do they do is they just they just stop eating. Does anybody feel hungry in this place? Do you guys ever feel hungry? Yes. That means you're normal. That means you're healthy. If you are feeling hungry, even right now, if you feel you're hungry, you're healthy. Don't worry. One hour you can take a break and have your meal. If you are feeling hungry, that means your thing, internal organ, everything is functional. You are a healthy person. But if you have lost your appetite, then there is something wrong. Hallelujah. Ed, your baby is on formula milk, right? What is the intake today? How much is the ML? how many ml? One twenty. What was the ml when you started first day? Sami. Three zero. How many? How many months old is that baby now? Five. Five months old baby started off at thirty. Now it is at one twenty. Has the appetite increased? The stomach has increased. I'm twenty years in the Lord. Appetite is only for one chapter. How is it possible? Pastor, I have to grow. Okay. What's your appetite? One chapter. One verse. Some people are dwelling on what is the word for today? You version Bible app. Every day in the morning, get up. Just read one verse. Excuse me. Look at that baby. Five months back, 30 ml. Five months down the line, 120 ml. That means the child is growing. If the child is still saying, "I'm happy with 30 ml," that means there's a problem. The church, the child is not growing. Appetite is not increasing. The mother and father will do something to stimulate or to do something that the hunger will increase. Come on, just talk to me. And then we have a problem when it comes to feed on the spiritual. milk of god's word there is a problem when we have to feed on the meat of god's word we don't have an appetite why if you don't have an appetite then you're spiritually sick hallelujah is god in the business of healing spiritually also yes 
is not just physical healing it's not just financial healing it's not just relational healing even spiritual healing if you call on god i've lost my appetite i need my appetite for your word to be restored listen he will heal you amen it's so important 20 years in the lord 20 months in the lord it does not listen don't wear those flags when i come to lord oh in my 80s when did you come to the lord early 90s where is the growth let your growth speak for yourself, not the number of years in the Lord. Are you with me, church? It's no big deal to say, I'm so many years walking with the Lord, I'm in the faith. No. So, I, 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 that baby, when I look at it, that baby is growing. That baby doesn't need to tell me, I'm taking 120 ml. By that thing, you know that baby is growing. In the same way, if that baby is growing and it is evident for us, if the naked eyes, listen church, it is, you take that analogy and use it for your spiritual life to feed of the voice of God. Feed yourself on God's word, you will grow. Listen, when you feed on God's word, you have no choice but you will grow. Come on church. If you feed on the milk of the word of God, when you feed on the meat of God's word, when you feed on the bread of God's word, when you feed on the water of God's word, you will grow. Amen. Hallelujah. You will grow. You have no choice. And I tell you, it will be evident. People can see it with naked eyes. They'll come and say, hey, there's something different about you. I see you bubbly. I see you full of joy. I see you strong. Your prayer is different. Your, 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 your counsel is different. You speak your word is different. Your people will begin to, listen, it cannot be hidden. When you begin to grow, you cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. And I talked about bonsai, that plant bonsai. Don't reduce yourself to a bonsai Christian. Because bonsai trees is just a decorative cute item it can do nothing it can just make your house a little more beautiful that's it it's useless it's useless that's a bonsai tree it just looks nice on the table it just looks nice in one corner that's it nothing more nothing less it may bring miniature uh, fruits is useless it may bear fruit but miniature one but cute little one you like to take selfie with it that's it that's it nothing more nothing less You'll never want to even pluck it and taste it. Listen, miniature faith will bring miniature fruits. Your faith has to grow. Come on, just talk to me. Your faith has to grow. Your faith has to grow. Your faith has to expand. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Don't reduce yourself. Listen, it's in the word of God. God has called us to be trees, not bonsais. The Bible says in Isaiah 61, He has called us trees of righteousness. Not bonsais. Because bonsais is completely manipulated. Bonsais is completely controlled by an external thing. It's not natural. They, 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 they manipulate it. It's by design of the, of the person who is taking care of that. But in the, in the natural thing about the seed that God has placed in our hands, it is not to be shot and stunted and dwarfed. He wants us to grow. Amen. Come on, guys. Amen. The kingdom of God is not dwarfed. The kingdom of God is ever increasing. Anybody belongs to the kingdom of God in this place? Amen. Then you need to grow. Bless somebody around you and say, you need to grow. You must grow. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you with me, church? Even the children. You need to encourage the children. You must grow in faith. You must grow in faith. You must grow in the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Please don't write off your children. Oh, saying that they're too young. No, don't write them off. If they can remember Jack and Jill, they can remember Psalms 1 1 also then. Amen. 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 Say amen to that. Hallelujah. We are very quick to teach our children. Mary had a little lamb. Be quick to teach also. God also has an amazing lamb. Amen. Are you with me, church? Be in the business, mom and dad, be in the business of training up your children. If they find it difficult to uh, remember a word, recite for them. Make it song. There are many CDs available. There are many children's CDs available where songs, where the uh, Psalms is uh, uh, translated into a musical form. They can sing along with that. It will stay, it will help you. It will help your children. When they are going to difficult time, they'll help you. There was one kid, many, I don't know whether I've shared it in the church, many years back when, I'm talking about the 19, 19, uh, late 1980s when I came to the Lord. Uh, 
there was a young believer mother husband was not a believer she was a young uh, uh, you know full of zeal mom came to the lord she had this typical because she was a teacher she had a typical habit of reading the bible when she is doing whether small portion or large portion she had this habit of reading the bible loudly somehow she had that thing of reading the bible loudly and while she was reading she had a very young child in our house about three years old three three and a half years old and while she's reading she's reading loudly that it is not only she's hearing but also the child is able to hear one day it so happened the child walks into the neighbor's house it's supposed it, it's a hindu house and there are idols and temple in that place in the house and the child is allowed to it goes into that place and begins to play and then begins to do what mess around with the idols takes all that uh, the 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 uh, the yellow powder the red powder that they use for these worship that they use all the flour and all what the baby did was mess around and put it over her face all over the place and came fully colored the mother gave her a wash fine that's okay the baby that small kid broken with severe fever and it was a very very uh, a, a, a very what you call a tense situation for the mother she didn't know what to do she didn't know what to do and suddenly while she's burning with fever the baby begins to recite psalms 27 verse 1 anybody know psalms 27 verse 1 mute 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 you're on mute i want to challenge people i want to challenge people listen psalms 27 verse 1 is a landmark scripture you should know it by heart in your sleep you should know it by heart yes or not? you want to say the lord is what the lord is my the lord is my what light no the lord is my shepherd is psalms 23 psalms 27 verse 1 blow it up blow it up blow it up psalms 27 he says what the lord is my light and my and my and my come on say it loudly no no you're on mute you're on mute my mute button is working and my salvation there's a question mark after that what's the question saying whom shall i next part of the part of scripture the lord is my the lord is my who strength of whom shall i be afraid this baby had no clue began to recite psalms 27 verse 1 the same thing over and over and over again literally the mother noticed that what happened was that baby was delivered out of fear that way mother didn't pray over the baby mother didn't pray over that child she said come i'll pray over you she didn't have the time to go to the pastor and say pastor pray no the bible said that the testimony said that she began to recite this the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid afraid of fever no the child didn't know the child prayed into the word of god sang into the word of god the child was delivered that's why i said please do not if you have to say uh, talk about uh, what do you call bedtime stories recite the bible bring in some flavors talk about the uh, for that you have to read the bible if you have to talk about bible story you have to read the bible don't talk about comics spend time reading challenge yourself today i'm going to read about david and goliath because this guy listen children ask mom and dada bedtime stories all the children in the house trouble your mom and dad i want to know what is bedtime stories talk to them challenge your mom and dad let them recite church it is some way or the other you're sowing god's seed into their life it will come alive one day i'll tell you the word of god will come alive in the due time in Jesus name Amen. hallelujah are you with me church your children also have a stomach I'm talking about spiritual stomach if you are so concerned about their physical stomach please don't ignore their spiritual stomach where I don't hear any amen except one hallelujah age no bar gender no bar they also have a spiritual stomach feed them with God's word they'll thank you one day for that hallelujah and that's exactly we're going to talk about it go to tonight i want to talk about something else i must we're going to do one more deposit i think so this might be the last one i don't know but i will see how it goes go to matthew chapter 5 verse number 13 matthew chapter 5 verse number 13 no bonsai faith no bonsai giving no bonsai love no bonsai fruiting come on church talk to me no bonsai no bonsai living 
Hallelujah. God wants you to be like a giant. Anybody wants to be a giant killer? Yeah. Then you got to think like a giant. You got to move like a giant. You got to behave like a giant. You got to pray like a giant. Come on, church. You got to behave like a giant. If you say, I want to be a giant killer, then you got to be one thinking also. For that, you need to grow. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Where did I ask you all to go? Somewhere in the Bible, right? Where did I ask you all to go? Of course, I know where I asked you all to go. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 13. What does the Bible say? Come on, just track with me. We're going to pick up one I must in this place. Or rather, two or three I must in this place. Come on, chapter 5, verse number 13. He says what? Jesus said, Jesus is speaking. And he said what? You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor or its seasoning or its flavor or its taste, he says, with, with what shall it be salted again? It is therefore thereafter good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under feet of or the foot of men. Hallelujah. By the way, who's speaking? Who's speaking this word? Jesus. Next, next question. To whom is he speaking? To the disciples? To the people? To the pastors? To the servants? To who is the word of God speaking? Sorry? No, in this setting, whom is he speaking to? In this setting, whom is he speaking to? He's speaking to the people who moved with him, right? He's speaking to the people who are the disciples or the apostles later. They, 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 he's speaking to them right now. Do you think that God is speaking to you today? Because we will not make progress until unless that gets settled that the word of God is speaking to me. The word of God is speaking to you. You will not make any progress. You'll just come wasted two hours of yours and go. But if you know that the word of God is meant and the word of God is speaking to you in first person language, not third person or second person, first person language, it will begin to make sense. Why do I say that? Please don't close this. Then open Psalms 40 verse number 7. Psalms 40. Don't close this please. Psalms 40 verse number 7. Psalms 40 verse, verse number 7. You need to read the word of God. You need to study the word of God. You've got to recite the word of God in first person language. First person. God is speaking to you in first person. Then only it will make sense. But if you say and you're looking for historical Jesus, you'll always be historical. Hallelujah. But I serve a God who is not just historical, he's current also. Come on church. We don't preach an historical Jesus. We preach a Jesus who is alive even today. Amen. If he was historical, the grave wouldn't have been empty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If, we are, if we have to stand here and preach a historical Jesus, the grave wouldn't have been empty. The tomb wouldn't have been empty. But the very fact, or the, not fact, the very true, the tomb is empty. He's no more historical. He's alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Historical, when he says, that means it is documented. It is true. Where did I ask you to go? See what it says. He says, then I said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. And what does it say next matter? I come in the volume of the book. And full stop. No, it is written of me. Lo, I come in the volume from Genesis to Revelation. The whole book. This is called the book. This is the book of books. The whole volume. The Bible is saying, here he's saying, it is written about me. It is written about you. When you know that the word of God, the whole volume, it is addressed to you, it will begin to make sense. It is written about, in the whole volume of the book, it is written about your future, it is written about your family, it is written about you. Look at the next part of the verse. Next part of that scripture, verse number 8. What did it say? And I did what? When I got to know the whole volume of the book is addressing me. It is speaking about me. It is speaking for me. It is, God has documented and he's speaking this word for me. And I, it, is, it is addressed to me. Then what did he say? I jumped. I, I did what? And I did what? I take delight to do your will, O Lord. So much so that your law is written on the tables of my heart. The word of God is supposed to be our delight. 
When you hear the word of God, when you are reading the word of God, when you are studying, when you are sitting in the word of God, it needs to be delight, not burdensome. And then he says what? I saw, oh, this is what God spoke about me. Oh, this is what, listen, how many of you are like that verse? Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. Hey, come on guys. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. What did he say? Huh? I know what? I know, I love this child. He says, I know the plans and what? The thoughts. Some other version says, I know the designs. What you have designed for me. The thoughts that you have towards me. The thoughts are of peace and not of evil. To give you hope and an expected end. Oh, listen. Don't run with Jeremiah 29 verse number 11. Only run with the whole volume. Amen. Amen. Don't be selective. Don't be selective of God's word. The Bible says in the whole volume of the book, it is written about me. Don't just say Jeremiah 29. No, no, hold a minute. Jeremiah 29 is one part of it. One dot of it. One portion, small teeny mini portion. You need to be in verse number 8. I delight to do your will, O Lord. And your law is written where? On the tables of my heart. Before we decorate the walls of our house, let the word of God be decorated on the tables of our written, engraved on the tables of our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Now tell me, if, how many of you believe the word of God in the whole volume of the book, it is about you? Amen. I'll ask one more time. Verse number seven. Lo, I come that in the volume of the book, it is written about me. How many of you all believe that the word is for you? It's about, in the whole volume of the book, it is written for you. Amen. Amen. Listen, I will, not, I will not scold you. You can be free to say amen. Sometimes in Dubai church, they start clapping. Some guys want to put a hand up. Amen. Loudly. Yes, because they know that they're receiving it. Listen, just receive it deep down in your spirit. Receive it with joy. Receive it with excitement. If the word of God is addressing you, it is coming to you, just so jump for joy. He says, in the volume of the book, it is written about me. Now, in the volume of the book, it also written what? You are the salt of the earth. He doesn't say only servants of God, messengers of God, prophets of God, priests of God. Come on, just talk. Any priest in this house? Amen. Then if you are a priest, then you also need to believe that you are the salt of the earth. He doesn't say you are a salt in one little, small little corner. You are salt of the earth. That means thrown anywhere in the corner of the world. You're supposed to be a salt. Ah, okay. So let's break it up. Salt, why did he say salt? What does salt got to do with us? What's a salt connection with us? What's a salt connection with us in our lives? Why did, he, why did Jesus use this metaphor that you are the salt of the earth? You are. He did not say, I am the salt of the earth. He says, you are the salt of the earth. What does salt do, by the way? Anybody uses salt in this house? In your, in your, in your houses? How many of you use, please honestly tell me, you all use salt as a decorative item in your house. Anybody here who uses salt as a decorative item in your house? No. So what do you use it for? Huh? Thank you, sir. Look at this kid. From this young age, he knows cooking. Simple common sense. Two-year-old kid also will say, they, they know to recognize between salt and something else. They exactly know what salt is for. All right. What does salt do? One brother said, flavor. Yes, Allah. It makes the food better, something nice. Makes the, one is, the, the uncle said, flavor. Makes the food better. Anything else? Guys, do you guys use salt? Seasoning. Fantastic. Makes the food what? Preservation is a preservative. What else? Now you are talking, guys. Tasty. I'm waiting for that word. Have you ever tasted your sunny side up without salt? Do you guys eat sunny side up? Yeah? You all eat omelets? You all have omelet. Have you ever tried your omelet without salt? It tastes less. It's just not nice. It makes the salt, it makes that dish better. It makes that dish flavorable. It got, adds flavor. It makes that, that dish tasty. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Now, let's break it up even further. Somebody said it is used for preservative. Preservation. We'll keep the preservation aside for a minute. Now, 
Say for example, one kg of meat, raw meat. How much salt do you think you should be putting inside? Ah, chef, stock, all the chefs in the house. Chef, one kg of meat, how much salt do you think you should be putting? Or how much salt do you all put? One kg? One kg of uh, meat with one kg of salt? You said preservation, no? 20 grams? Wow. Very health conscious, huh? Very health conscious. Super man. Listen, the quantity of meat is large. Looking at the quantity of meat, you put, some people would put two, three pinches of salt over it. Correct? Does it affect the meat? Does it affect the dish? Yes? What's another word that I would use if I have to use, use salt affecting the texture, changing the taste of that meat? What's another word that you'll be doing? What, like, what, what I can use? I love that word. That small pinch of salt is so powerful, it does not matter whether it is 1 kg or 10 kg. It has a power to influence. It does not matter. How strong that meat is. It does not matter that strong, that meat is from Australia. You know Australian meats, they smell. At the same time, it does not matter if the meat is from Somalia. It has the power to influence that meat. Hallelujah. Amen. That same salt has the power to influence chicken, uh, Indian masala curry. At the same time, that same salt has the same power to influence Chinese also. Chinese food. Come on, just talk to me. Or does it dance here and there? No. It will, for what it is used, it will be factual. Hallelujah. Whether it is used in Australia, whether it's used in America, it's used in Central Africa, it does not matter. That salt has the property, has the power to influence for what is being used. Hallelujah. If you use more, it can get messed up. Next thing. Can you see the salt that you use after I have put in the curry or in the sunny side up or your omelet? Can you see the salt? No. Ah, come on. I'll prove you wrong. You can see the salt? How can you see the salt? Not an empty plate. When you put it on chicken curry, can you see the salt? Even though you cannot see it, you can actually see it. Why? By its taste. That's what God wants us to be. Move into a situation that you become soluble. Because salt, once it gets soluble, you cannot see it. But the trace is there. It is there in the situation, but it is not there. It is there in the situation, but you cannot see it. The effect is only taken care. The effect is only taken over there. It's taken over that place, but it is outside. Listen, God wants our lives as the sons of God, as a daughter of the living God, to be people of influence. That means it must be, uh, it, it, listen, walk out of this room tonight, that I must be in a position of influence. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Imagine for the one kg of salt, I put half kg of, uh, half kg of, uh, uh, for the one kg of uh, meat, I put half kg of salt. It is overpowered already. You'll spit it out. Come on, church. Am I making some sense? You make sure that you pray that understanding. Say, God, I must be an agent of influence, not overpowering. That I'm part of the reaction. I'm part of that situation, but I'm unseen. That's what God wants us to be. There are times that we move into people's life as I help. There are times we move into people's life as we pray for them. We move into people's life that, as, that we stand as a support and we want to be recognized. Please tell me, when is the last time you saw the salt we recognized? Hey, show me. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there in the dish. No, you can see flakes of paprika. You can see a chili. You can see a turmeric. You can see all these things. But show me where you can see salt. Amen. And this child just said, Sometimes your, your food can be very spicy, but if there is no salt, it's useless.
Come on, just come on, making some sense here. It makes the food better. It adds that seasoning. It adds that flavor. It makes the food tasty. Whether it is spicy or not spicy, salt is must. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I give you some more good news? Go to the same scripture in Luke. Dr. Luke has an eye for detail. Dr. Luke has an eye. Listen, this was written by Matt, Matthew. But Dr. Luke is a doctor. That's why they are doctors. They have an eye for a lot of details. Go to chapter 24. Go to chapter 24 and verse number 30. 34. Uh, chapter 14, verse number 34. Chapter 13, verse number 24. Chapter 13, verse number 24. See what the Bible says. Look at the why. first thing that comes out of the word of God. The first thing that the Bible talks about. What does it say? Only the first line. What does it say? That's it. What does it say? Salt is good. Hallelujah. Any salt in this house? Any salt in this house? Amen. Anybody's name is called salt in this house? Amen. Any salt in this place? Any salty people person here? Amen. Then the Bible says you are good. Amen. Come on, the Bible says then you are good. Amen. Come on guys, the Bible says you are good. Amen. That's what the word of God declares. In the volume of the book, it is written about me. And what does the Bible say? You are good. Amen. It doesn't matter what your dad says. It doesn't matter what your boss says about you. It should matter what the above father says about you. What God says about you. And God's word says, salt is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Forget about what people have opinion about you. They may know your past. They may know a lot of things about the hidden things and all your background. It does not matter. Listen, church. When you are in Christ, if you have received Christ into your life and you're walking with him, then this is what he says about you, that you are good. Amen. Then the next part he says, if the salt loses its flavor, if it loses its seasoning taste, it's good for nothing. In other words, salt can lose its flavor. Yes. Don't lose your seasoning power. Amen. Are you with me, church? God has looked at you and he says, you are good. You are salt. You are good. Ask God for grace wherever you are. You are a good influence. Have you heard this word, bad influence and good influence? Mm -hmm. In your friend circle, in your family circle, in your corporate circle, in your church circle, whatever circle you want to call it, call it. Listen, pray, I must be a good influence. If it is pertaining faith, I must be a good influence of faith. If, you are a, if it's pertaining prayer, I must be a good influence of prayer warrior. Come on, talk to me, church. In your prayer, don't sing song. Listen, that most of the time people do what? In the prayer, they release all their, they, instead of releasing the gospel, they release gossip. These are glorified gossips. When you're praying, release the word of God. Walk out of this room. I must be a good influence. Though I may not be seen in that reaction, I may not be seen around, but I, my, my trace is still there. Hallelujah. And I like that word. He said what? You are the salt of the earth. Not just within your family. I like that word, what Jesus said. You didn't say, you're a salt in the city. Thank God he did not say that. He left that word borderless. You're the salt of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. There could be some people sitting in this room. God is going to take you out of this city. Amen. I want to speak that word over you. Your time in this place is limited. Your time in this place is limited. Wherever God takes you, run with that word. You are the salt of the earth. And if you are the salt of the earth, then you also listen to that word. Salt is good. In other words, you are good. In Jesus' name. Now, talk to me. Is fish a very strong meat, by the way? It's fish, fish. Huh? It's smelly, right? Is it, does it have a strong essence inside of it? Come on, church. It's very strong within itself. 
it can make its presence known like this in this house. Come on. You bring a fish in this place, everybody comes to know there's something fishy here. Come on, guys. But look, that pinch of salt has impact even on that fishy thing. I use a new word now. You're not just influential, but you're also impactful. Walk out of this room tonight and pray and say, God, I must not just be influential, but I must be impactful. I must impact people's life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus did not just influence people. He impacted people's life. That's what he does. Amen. He does not just influence once in a while here and there. He impacts lives. You are the salt of the earth. You're called to impact. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I talk to moms and dads now? Don't look for outside Godfather and outside Godmothers. Don't look for teachers outside in the school and outside in the college. You be the first Godfather and be the Godmother. You be the first father and the, be the first mother, father and mother for your children as teachers in your own house. Listen, start off with being an influence for your children in your house. Don't wait for the child. Don't wait for the teacher. Our teacher's duty. I'm paying them. They're getting their fees. Or they're, they're, they're getting their salary by the fees that I pay. They should be teaching. No, 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 no. Hold a minute. Start being a salt in your house first. Start influencing your children first. If you do not influence your children, where is my phone? Is it with someone? If you don't influence your children correctly, this will influence. This device will influence your children. If we do not take influencing and impacting our children at home level, listen church, do not cry. Do not go into fasting and praying, God, when they go and hooked on to this influence. And there are a lot of bad influences on this place. In these days we live, everything is open. Everything is open today. Everything is open about. Nothing is hidden. Church, jump in to see what your children are watching. Jump in to see what aptitude, what uh, their likings are from this young age. Hallelujah. If you see a lot of children, they have their, uh, what you call, heroes and heroines already marked up in their head because of the, uh, the kind of movies and kind of uh, uh, mm, uh, serials all the shows that are coming up. And if you see your child dressing up like one particular person, watch out. Suddenly you see something happening from here, watch out what she's watching, what he's watching. Watch out. Because the child is under an influence. Come on, church. It is still, we still have time at hand. Don't waste it. Don't wait for somebody and tell the child, oh, so my, uh, I will take this person to this one, I'll take to that person for counseling, I will take to this person, my teacher, and this principal, this supervisor, this pastor, that man of God. Hold a minute. You be the man of God for your children. You be the, come on guys, no amen from the parents at all. You be the woman of God. You be the servant of God for, you be the mouthpiece for God in your own children's life. But you move into the situation. You do what God asked you to do and move out. You're soluble. Nobody can see a trace of you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You know Publius right in the Bible? Some weeks back I spoke about him in Acts 28. Publius. His father was sick. And he brought him to who? Paul. And the Bible says Paul laid hand over him. And the Bible says, Paul healed him. I like that word, Paul healed him. Did Paul physically give something? No, the anointing that was resting on him released that healing anointing. Come on, church. We need to be the salt of the earth that release the healing, that release breakthrough with the anointing that is resting on our lives. Amen is very weak. You're not convinced. You're, there's no conviction at all. You've got to be believing what the word of God talking of is speaking about you, speaks about you. Hallelujah. Your bondages are broken. That's what people are waiting. The earth is waiting for the salt to rise up. That they can have some taste in their life. They can make their lives.
lives better. God is waiting for the sons to go out as salt of the earth. Go to that verse number 14 of that Matthew chapter 5. What the next thing he says? You are the light of the world. Chapter, four, chapter 5 verse number 14. He says you are the light of the world. Is that what it says in your Bible? He says you are a light. Anybody wants to glorify God? Honestly. Glorify God is not coming to church singing loudly and Oh, my, bad. my favorite song is going on. Oh, no, no, church. That's just part of it. Oh, the music is nice today. Oh, hallelujah, singing. Oh, no. And you, till you sing till your voice is loud. No, it's not just glorifying God. Just we're just screaming, shouting, and singing. No, there's not something more to it. Hallelujah. We are not something that we restrict to worship only in these four corners of this world, of this room only. Oh, this uh, service is over. Worship is over. Go home. Come back next week. No, worship is something that we need to live and give God every single moment of our lives. Amen. Anybody wants to glorify God? Amen. Go to verse number 16. Anybody wants to glorify God? Let's look at what the Bible says in verse number 16. What does it say? Let your light, he said you are the light of the world. And Jesus said what? Let your light so shine. He did not say, check it out if you want to shine. Please, if you want to. No, he doesn't say check it out if you want to, maybe if you want to. No, he says let your light so shine. That means you are expected to shine. Amen. That means I must shine. You must shine. That's what the expectation of verse 16 is. Let your light so shine. Where? Before men. That they, when they see your good works, what will they do? They will glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. That means it is not just in these four corners that we come, the music is on, the list of the songs going on, we sing hallelujah, our God is greater, who is like the Lord. No, it's not just that. When we are in public, we are supposed to display good works. And one of the, one of the good works that I can think about is display the power of God. Oh, not very sure. One of the best things that we can display or that we, that we can bring forth, this is the, the people can see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. And one, of, one of the good works that I can think about from the word of God is to display the power of God in public places. In messed up life. You remember the man at the temple called Beautiful? Begging. Lame man. And then Paul, Peter and John walk into that place and this guy looking at him, oh, I'm going to get something. He asks, he says, gold and silver is not in my pocket. Neither do I have gold and silver in my hand. I can't give you. I don't have the change also. But I, what I certainly have, listen church. Do you know you can be an influence without anything in your hand? You may not have the gold. You may not have the silver. You may not have the Mercedes car parked in your, in your, in your parking lot. You may not have an MD's job. You may not be living in a 14 bedroom villa. You may not have anything of that stuff. You don't need to have all that to become an influence or an impactor or to shine. Come on, just talk to me. Thank God that incident is recorded in the Bible. Gold and silver, I don't have to make you rich. But certainly what I have, rise up in the name of Jesus and walk. Next thing the Bible says, he received strength in his ankles and he began to jump. He began to walk. He began to run. And the next part of the Bible says what? He began to glorify He began to glorify God. Then when people see your good works, they will glorify God. Now tell me, how many of you want God to be glorified in you and through you? Yes. Then display the power of God. Yes. This light is a very powerful thing. When you switch the light on in the midst of darkness, darkness cannot say, can I occupy 20%, you take 80%. Let me occupy one corner. No, darkness just comes to take over. Ah, man. Light just comes to take over. So much is the impact, it just comes and takes over. Listen, church, you need to live a life that you're full of light, that no matter how darkness is surrounding that area, you come to take over. Amen. Come on, just talk to me. Pray, I must shine. If things are looking dark, if the things are looking gloomy, if the things are looking shaky, if the things are looking fair, 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 fair not clear, 
Listen, church, pray that you would shine in that place. See, you never see light say, hey, I'm light, I'm light. No, no, no. Light does its job quietly. Moment switched on. Darkness has to flee. It doesn't come to say, hey, listen, I'll take care of it. No, no. The Bible says, light when it is on, it overcomes darkness. I'll give you one more example. You don't have to have a big name to be an influence. You don't have to be having a very big name to shine. You don't have to have somebody very, uh, very connected. Not necessary. Not necessary. Then in that case, I think you should have a chat with Naman's maid. Anybody knows Naman in the Bible? Yeah? You are struck with leprosy. Flesh-eating disease. The Bible doesn't even give care to give the name. One of the versions says, little maid. Probably child labor. Insignificant. The Bible doesn't even give care to give the name of the little. He just says, little maid servant. What does she do? She calls. The Bible says, this guy is a captain of the host. He is a captain of the army. Top guy, top official. He may be the top official outside. But this little one approaches his boss. The guy may be the captain of the host of the army. Fine. He is the captain. But the little one approaches his boss, his wife. He says, Madam, tell sir to go to so and so place in Israel. There is one man. I saw his name. He is a prophet of God. Go and show himself to that place or to that person. So it will be healed. Rest is history. Was Naman healed? Please tell me what is the name of that maid. From next week onwards, you will be the pastor in the church. Come, I'll pray for you now itself. I'll ordain you now itself. Please tell me the name of the blood little girl. No, there is no name. You'll not find it. You don't have to have a name to say I'm an influence. Come on, church. Talk to the, don't talk to that girl. Don't talk to Naman. That, that Naman paid attention to that small little girl. He didn't. That means that must have been an influence and impact on the mistress so strong. My husband had to listen. Come on, just talk to me, church. Pray God would raise you. I must be that influence. But even if I have to give a suggestion to my boss, if I have to give suggestion to somebody superior, they will pay attention to you and say, not tell you to shut up. I will take your word. Is that possible, church? Is this possible? It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless somebody around and say, you must shine. And one of the things that causes, causes the light to shut up is shyness. What causes the light to be overshadowed and pushed aside is fear. Hallelujah. By nature, light is, light is very bold. It is never afraid of darkness. But the Bible says what? Light overcomes darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend the light. So by nature, by nature, by the property that it is, the, the, the light is, it is bold. It's never afraid to shine anywhere. Throw it in gross darkness, it will still shine. Come on guys, talk to me. Would you like to pray that even as we even as we end towards this tonight's tonight service, God, I must be bold. We sang that song just now. If by with you I am bold, with you I am brave. Listen, that should be the lifestyle of Allah. As lights we shine. In the book of uh, Proverbs, it says, We shine brighter and brighter. The path of the just, look at the word of God. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Did you see the morning sunrise? Huh? Have you seen the morning sunrise? Yes. Have you seen the sun at noon time? Is it the same in the morning? It just shines slowly, 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 brighter and brighter and brighter and bright. That's what exactly what the word of God says. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. In Jesus' name. I must be influential. I must be an impactor. I must. 
Hallelujah. Listen, church, this is not a feel-good message. Oh, nice it sounds. No, this message needs to be practical. We need to live out this message. We need to live out this word. We need to live out, I am the salt of the earth. We need to live out, I am the light of the world. In Jesus' name. Don't be like that bonsais. They're not, they not impactful. They're good for, for as a decorative, spe a decorative item in the house. That's it. No impact at all. No influence at all. No power at all. It's nice for good. Listen, church, don't be a bonsai Christian. Hallelujah. God has called you to be a useful person, not a decorative person. A world peace. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you with me, church? Shall we arise and pray then? Shall we arise and pray? Shall we arise and pray? Just keep your Bibles aside. Keep your pens aside. If you know that you know that God has spoken to you, I wanted to pick up that point. And what, in which area, son, come and play for me. Just very soft. Which is that area that God has spoken to you specifically? Yes, a big hallelujah. He says you are the light of the world. Big hallelujah for that. But light is supposed to be functional. Are you with me, church? Yes, today we have lampshades in different shapes and different sizes. But the primary thing about light is what? It's supposed to shine. We have bought it in different shapes, different sizes, looks beautiful, fine. We don't buy it in our house, just let it look beautiful. But we buy it with one intention, it is supposed to shine. Even tonight, God has called you out of darkness. He has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. For what? That we may shine. We need to shine in our workplaces. We need to shine. Church, it's, it's time that we shine in our families. It does not matter if you're the only person saved in your house. You need to shine. It doesn't matter. You are surrounded with a bunch of unbeliever friends and they seem to be very strong. Listen, light is even more stronger. Remember one thing, salt is even more stronger. A pinch of salt is good enough. A pinch of salt. And it changes the taste. Yeah, rather, it makes the dish better. It makes the dish more flavorable. It makes the dish even big. Your appetite increases when it is tasty. Come on, church. There are times that you are hungry, but when the food is tasteless, you lose your appetite. You add little salt, it makes it tasty. It makes it better. Your appetite increases. Come on, church. Lift your voice. And all I must influence. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, give God a spoken. You just begin to thank God and say, God, I'm so thankful, God, that you've called me to be the salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. Not salt of one town, not salt in one family, not salt in one city, not salt in one corner of the world. But you've asked me, Lord, your word says you are the salt of the earth, and salt is good. When the dish comes out tasty, sumptuous, salt doesn't say, it's me, it's me, it's me. It never seeks glory. It never seeks attention. It is me who may. No, no, no. When God begins to use you and begins to bring breakthrough in the lives of the people, it begin, the God begins to use you that, that causes to bring taste and flavor in the lives of the people outside. Don't look for recognition. Don't look for recognition. Don't look for recognition. Don't look for attention. Because salt by nature is soluble. Pray. 
parents pray for your children pray for yourself before you pray for your children I must be the right influence for my son I must be the right influence for my daughter I must be the right influence the right or correct godly influence not just good influence but godly influence for my son godly influence for my daughter on my children pray ask God for grace and say God I take grace that's why you come to church you take grace and church this is what happens when you enter the presence of God because grace is available where he is and tonight's grace is talking about God giving us grace to be impactors city impactors family impactors corporate life impact us come on lift your voice and pray and ask God for grace that's what the Bible says that God is looking the, 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 the earnest expectation of all creation is for the impactors sons of God would you like to pray God I need wisdom to be the right influence for my children pray come on mom and dad not just young children and not just small toddlers not we're not talking about small kids even for teenagers not just for teenagers even for young adults even young adults they need their parents around there are some parents they may have their children at crossroads they may be in the valley of decision important decisions in life pray that you would be the right influence you would be a godly influence you would be a right you would be a godly impactor even in the children's life pray spirit of God anoint my head with fresh oil this evening pray 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 Lord anoint my head with fresh oil Lord anoint my fre- anoint my head with fresh oil a fresh oil that I would be a godly influence Please don't look at your age. Please don't look at your gender. Don't look at your qualification. Don't look at how much money you have in the bank balance. You have it or you don't have it. It does not matter whether you have a theology certificate, whether you have gone to a big college, whether you have gone to a big university. It does not matter. It does not matter. You are the salt of the earth and you are supposed to be. If you are talking about God saying, Lord, anoint my head with oil, then you pray with that and believe that, that you would be the next influencer. You would be the next impactor. This is not a this is not something that uh, this is not something that is a feel good thing. No, this is a desperate prayer. God, I really want to be an influencer in my lifetime. I want to be an influencer. I want to be an influencer. Even among unbelievers, when I'm doing life with them, when I'm doing relations with them, when I'm doing corporate life with them, when I'm doing business with them, whatever, whatever that I do, God, I want to be an influence. Not the other other way around, Lord. Listen to there is a word for somebody in this place. I don't know for whom it is. I hear a word called life coach. God is going to raise you up as a life coach. And life coaches across the globe are known to be influencers. I'm not talking about a worldly life coach. I'm talking about from a spiritual gospel standpoint, you will be a life coach. I don't know for whom it is. I don't know for whom it is. Just take it. The world is looking for life coaches. You see across the globe, across all, 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 all walks of life, across all faith. Ask God for grace that you would shine would you like to pray God I want to exhibit good works I want to show he says that men would see your good works and glorify God in the heaven would you like to pray God I want to be a vessel that exhibits your power shows your power come on pray come on church this is something that pray 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 it's a desperate prayer Pray, pray, pray that you would be a you would be a son of God, you would be a servant of God, you would be a daughter of God. When you walk into the room, the enemy trembles. I'm talking about that power. I'm talking about that power. I'm talking about that power. When you walk into the room, chains break off. 
I'm talking about that power. I'm talking about that power. When you walk into the room, sickness begins to tremble. I'm talking about that power. I'm talking about that good works. There are quite a number of people who are above 40 years old in this church even right now. Would you like to pray that God, I want to be a great influence to the young teenagers even in my church, young adults even in my church. There are some people who are married for 20 years. There are some people who are married for good 15 years and it is healthy. Would you like to pray, God, I want to be an influencer. I want to be an impactor for newly married couples. How to do godly marriage. Come on church, you can be a salt, you can be a salt, you can be a salt, you can be a salt to those godly, ma uh, newly married couples. Come on church, you can be a salt to those newly, new parents in town. Pray, your life will not be insipid. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Your life will not be insipid. What is insipid? Tasteless. Pray that you never lose your saltiness. Never lose your savor or never lose your flavor. Oh, Spirit of God, I ask you for that grace on everyone in this place. I ask you for that grace. I pray, God, that you pour, pour out a fresh Lord, the anointing of your presence over us even right now. The anointing of your presence over us right now. I pray for the fresh flow of your, of your presence over us even right now. Lord, that grace may flow. Your grace may flow. Lord, that's what happens, Lord. That when grace comes in, Lord, grace brings in empowerment. Grace brings in, Lord, empowerment. Grace Grace propels, grace encourages, grace pushes, oh God. Lord, we pray as a church. Come on, church, pray for your church. Pray for your church. If you know that this is their family, pray for your church. That this church in this place, this church, this not only in this city, even as we, even as we, even as we broadcast this uh, thing over the internet, Lord, I pray that this church will be the salt of the earth. Come on, just pray, pray. Come on, pray, pray. Irrespective of who comes and stands and ministers here, whoever, it could be a young man, it could be a young woman, it could be a child, it could be an elderly person. It does not matter. Gender no bar. Whoever stands to minister, pray that person will be like a salt to the earth. One of the things of light is hope. In the midst of darkness, you switch the light on. Light is hope. Light is hope. <laughs> pray, God. I don't want to ever live a life that is hopeless. Even if it's a dead end, pray God, I won't always be hopeful. I'll always be hopeful. That's what light does. Light in itself carries hope. You're very quiet, church. You're very, very quiet. You're very quiet. Pray, pray, pray. I don't know whether you are able to comprehend, whether you're able to receive it in your deep down in your spirit, where you will understand. I just pray that God would open up your eyes. God would enlighten your eyes. God would enlighten your eyes. God would enlighten your eyes. Even tonight, I pray that that grace would enrich you from the deep inside out. the influence that the father in heaven was for Jesus he said whatever I see my father do I do the same thing whatever I see the father speak I also speak the same pray all the dads in the house that you would be such a spiritual giant you would be such a spiritual royal priest in the house that your sons would just imitate you just like the way you are even Jesus needed his father and what an influence that he had. <laughs> May 
me doro sana de kere asada de arada we thank you holy spirit we pray oh god that lord give us wisdom give us understanding lord you unveil our eyes you open our eyes to understand the depth of your word that was released tonight that when we walk out of this room we walk with this understanding i must shine for jesus i must shine for the father above i must be a godly influence i must be a godly impact just bless you father just bless you god we just bless you we bless you we bless you in jesus name